So in this video I'm concentrating on the reactivity series of metals. So we'll see how metals react with various substances in this video. Here we have the reactivity series. Think of it as a league table with the most reactive metals at the top. So I've got potassium, sodium and lithium. They're my group 1 metals which are really, really reactive. So here I've included the periodic table. And we know that on the left hand side of the periodic table, on the left hand side of these steps, we've got our metals. Group 1 metals are just here. So we've got the potassium, sodium, lithium, potassium, sodium, lithium, group 1 metals. So what makes them so reactive? What is it about them? Let's have a look. There's sodium, there's its outer shell with one electron. So reactive metals readily form cations. So by that I mean that that atom will lose an electron. So if an atom loses an electron, it now becomes overall positive. It's got a positive charge. So what I have there is not an atom, but an ion. And more specifically, it's a cation because we're talking about the positive charge. So sodium has lost an electron and that electron is free to combine with other elements. So simply, the further up you are in this reactivity series, the more likely the atoms will lose electrons and become cations. There is no chance of the likes of silver and gold doing that. OK, here we've got a nice summary table showing us how the metals react with water and how the metals react with dilute acid. In this column, we've got tendency or likelihood, chances of, the metal atoms forming cations. So we've just looked at that. So increasing ability of metal atoms to form positive ions. All metals will form positive ions. So let's have a look at the reactions with water. I'll show you these a little bit later. So here we've got cold water. Here we've got reacting very slowly with cold water, but we do get reactions with steam, okay, obviously um, water vapour. And here, no reaction at all with cold water or with steam. They are so unreactive, they're not going to form those cations. Next, if we have a look at reactions with dilute acid, so it could be sulfuric acid, nitric acid, hydrochloric acid, they're diluted strong acids, so a bit of water added to those to dilute them. Here we've got vigorous reactions, very violent reactions, and this is another word they use, the word vigorous. So by that we mean a very violent, very fast reaction. Um, today I shook Billy England by the shirt collar so he got the idea of what a vigorous reaction is. Very violent reaction. Next, um, react to form hydrogen in a salt solution and then here we go again, not reacting at all. Now what this table doesn't summarise is how these metals might react with air or more specifically with the oxygen in the air. So here, when metals react with oxygen in the air, we talk about corrosive, we're talking about oxidation. Okay. Copper, silver and gold, they do not oxidise. Yeah, they will not react with the oxygen in the air. They're very unreactive. We might use the word resistant. Okay. They're resistant to react with the oxygen in the air. These metals, however, further up, they react only too well with the oxygen in the air. And we've also thought about iron, more specifically iron, and we said that iron, it will react, so iron plus oxygen will make iron oxide. Okay, iron oxide. So that's an oxidation reaction. Why is it oxidation? Because oxygen is added to the iron. This is what's known as corrosion, and iron oxide is specifically called rust. We don't talk about these other metals rusting, we only talk about iron rusting. 
okay so you get that orangey rust formed but these other elements at least the reactive ones can react with oxygen to form their oxide potassium oxide sodium oxide calcium oxide magnesium oxide aluminium oxide and so on and so forth okay so that's oxidation or corrosive reactions corrosion so finally what I want to do is remind you of some general reactions so you've seen these in other places in the course a metal plus water makes a metal hydroxide and hydrogen of course the test for hydrogen is lighted splint with a squeaky pop metal plus an acid makes a salt and hydrogen so not a salt and water but a salt and hydrogen make sure you don't get that one mixed up so here's some chemical formula the metal potassium plus water makes a metal hydroxide okay aqueous and hydrogen gas is formed a less reactive metal so further down your activity series with magnesium a magnesium plus water but look this time it's a gas steam makes magnesium oxide so a small difference there okay a magnesium oxide rather than magnesium hydroxide so be careful and again we've got hydrogen gas formed in this example and by all means pause the video to have a close look here we've got a fairly unreactive metal zinc um, reacting with sulfuric acid aqueous so that's dilute acid will make zinc sulfate now come on you should know this by now there's the salt being formed zinc plus sulfuric acid so the zinc displaces the hydrogen to make zinc sulfate and the hydrogen gas okay so that's us um, done a review of reactivity of metals